Okay, so I figured out the nuclear radius by firing alpha particles at the nucleus and figuring out how close they get to the nucleus. I also found out the nuclear radius by using high energy electron diffraction. Okay, so if I do this for different elements, carbon, silicon, iron, tin, and so on, I can figure out the nuclear radius using these different methods. I've also got the nucleon number here, which is the number of protons plus number of neutrons in each nucleus. If I plot a graph of nuclear radius against nucleon number, you get this relationship here. And I can't quite tell what the relationship is by just looking at the graph, but it's going to look something like this. Okay, so it's going to be the nuclear radius equals some constant R naught, so R sub naught there, times the nucleon number to the power of another constant, which is n, which don't know what R naught and n are. We're going to try to figure it out using some kind of graphical method. Instead of plotting this graph, we're going to try to plot different graphs which can help us figure out R0 and N. Okay, in physics, we prefer plotting lines. So I'm going to force this equation into a line. So the first step is to take logs on both sides. Okay, and then I'm going to use the log rules that you learned in maths to separate this. Okay, and then I'm going to use another log rule to bring the end down the front as a coefficient. Okay, and now I'm going to compare this to equation of line. So equation of line is y equals mx plus c, but I'm going to put the mx over here. You'll see why. So if I plot on the y-axis ln r and on the x-axis ln a, you should see that for my gradient, I should get m. Okay, and for my uh, y intercept, I should get ln r naught. So, first step would be to do those to calculate ln a and ln r uh, for each value here. So, I'll use a calculator to do that and under the side of the graph um, table there. And then I'll plot the points, okay, join them using a line at best fit, and work out the gradient. And the gradient should give me the power. And it turns out the power is going to be a third. Okay, and the intercept here is going to equal ln of the constant r naught. So to figure out the constant, I'll have to do e to the power of the y-intercept to get r naught. And it turns out r naught is roughly around one, a femtometer in the order of femtometers. Okay, so in this question here, the question is already telling you that the radius is proportional to the nuclear number to the power of that, but it wants you to prove that using the data here. So here's a relationship it's trying to ask us to test. R is directly proportional to a to the third. So this means written as an equation, we have some constant k. Now we already know that k is R naught, which is approximately one or 1.2 femtometers, but we're gonna have to prove that it's a constant. So I'm gonna rearrange it to get this. I'm gonna show that k is a constant. I'll try it for the first set of data. So I'm going to use the rate, nuclear radius divided by the nuclear number to the power of a third. I get 1.16. I try for the second set of data with the silicon there. Okay, I get 1.13. And I get, uh, with iron, I get 1.14. And you try at least a minimum of three. Now these are quite similar. So that means the relationship is most likely going to be true. So I write a conclusion. So the, uh, the numbers are similar. These constants are similar. We expect it to be a constant. Um, so the radius is indeed proportional to the nuclear number to the power of a third. If they weren't similar, if they were quite different, then you'd conclude that the relationship isn't true. Okay, so question three, use the data to show graphically that R is equal to R naught A to the third, determine R naught. So here we already know that the power, the N, is a third. And we just want to show, we're going to figure out R naught. So in this case, we don't have to take logs. It's just much easier to compare this directly to y equals mx plus c. Now, as you see, there is no addition in here over here, so there isn't, isn't going to be a y-intercept. It's just y equals mx. Um, so in this case, if I plot on the y-axis r, on the x-axis a to the power of a third, so I put a to the power of a third on the x-axis and r on this case, and then I should get a straight line which with a gradient of r naught. My gradient should be R naught. So first step is to figure out a to the power of a third. So to draw on the table there, figure out the a to the third. So I take the 12 and draw to the power of a third. And then if I plot these points on a graph, 
I guess, straight line with going, which is going through the origin. So the y-interceptor should be zero, and the gradient here should equal R naught, which is approximately one or one point one point two femtometers.